Sorry, guys. I can't tell if I'm live or not live. The benefits of technology right now. Ah, looks like we are live. Okay, perfect. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Brianne Callanan. I'm a naturopathic doctor. And today, what we're going to talk all about is how gut health impacts resistant weight loss. And if you don't know, I'm the creator of the Metabolic Reset Program, where we help individuals lose 20 to 40 pounds in just six weeks. And it's about not looking as weight as the problem. Weight and resistant weight loss is not the problem. What we have to do is look at weight and weight gain as just a symptom of something else going on. And once we correct the root cause, which is oftentimes gut health, hormones, mindset, hormones, detoxification, genetics, once we address the root cause, weight becomes a non-issue. And that's how participants of the Metabolic Reset Program are able to lose such rapid weight loss in such a short period of time because yes, diet and nutrition and exercising the right amount for the right reasons at the right time is important, but for a significant amount of the population, we know that exercising more and eating less simply just does not work. And research has supported that for a long period of time. So we need to get away from telling people to eat less, exercise more. We don't know that we do know that that doesn't work. So there's a better solution. And today what we're going to go through, if I can figure out how to share my screen with you guys, is all about how the gut and the gut microbiome can impact your ability to lose weight. So here we have a patient's GI map test that we just got back. And the key things that I want to zone in for you today is one, on acromancia mucinophila and fecal bacteria and pregnancy. So acromancia mucinophila, mucin means mucus, philia means loving. So what acromancia does is it actually degrades the mucus in your digestive tract. So we know that there's a mucus layer lying in your intestine and what acromancia does is it's like a Pac-Man. It breaks it down and utilizes the mucin, our mucus, as a fuel source. And in utilizing the mucus as a full fuel source, it secretes byproducts, acetate and propionate. And what are these? These are like crumbs when acromancia goes in and eats it produces these little crumbs, which the other bacteria can use as a fuel source when they don't have food coming in, such as an overnight fast. So acromancia is really, really important. And we know that low levels of acromancia have been associated with obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and irritable bowel disease. And I just want to share a study with you, if we can pull it up. don't know what screen you're, it's so hard when I'm using Zoom. I can't figure out what screen you guys are actually seeing right now. Okay, so hopefully you can see this study. Yes, you can. So this is all on acromancia. This is not the one that I want to show you guys though. I want to show you guys this one. So give me a second here. We'll do a new screen share. One day I'm sure I'll figure this out. Okay, so here's a research study and this is published. This is not the journal of Wu. This is actually from Frontiers, a medical journal, peer-reviewed, double-blind, randomized controls trial that showed those with obesity, diabetes, alcohol, or intestinal inflammation actually had a reduced level of acromancia, a decreased mucus thickness, because what acromancia does is it degrades the mucus, then stimulates the goblet cells through a process to secrete more mucus. So in those with obesity, diabetes, alcoholic, or too much alcohol, intestinal inflammation, we're seeing reduced mucus thickness, we're seeing less levels of acromancia. And what does that lead to? Well, it leads to a process called metabolic endotoxemia. So we're seeing liver inflammation, fatty liver, insulin resistance. So this, um, many of my clients say they just look at carbohydrates and they gain weight. Insulin resistance is a primary cause for that inability to burn energy for fuel, simply consuming something and storing it um, is often what we see in terms of insulin resistance, inflammation, type two diabetes. And then on the other hand, when you have an abundance of acromancia, you're seeing increased mucus thickness, less weight gain, less insulin resistance, less diabetes, better health overall. And if we switch to this study, it's showing that if we can elevate acromantia, we can improve metabolic disorders associated with obesity, diabetes, liver disease, cardiometabolic disorders, etc. So what we really want to do is upregulate acromantia. And how do we do that? Well, a diet rich in polyphenols, so fruits and vegetables, curcumin, green tea, as well as specific prebiotic fibers to help acromantia grow, such as glucoman. And that's why we're using the fiber lean product that I created with 
glucomannan in it because it's been shown to increase acromancia. In addition, we want to use specific probiotics, specifically only bifidobacteria, to raise that up. Now, the other one that we saw low on this patient's GI map was fecal calibacterium prosnitsky. When you have lower levels of acromancia, you don't have as much crumbs lying around, then you don't have as much of the fuel source for fecal bacterium presence. And this one's really, really important because it produces butyrate, a short chain fatty acid that's really important for the intestinal health cells. So essentially the intestines provide a home for these bacteria and the bacteria provide byproducts um, of just existing that promote really healthy intestinal cells. Low levels of this type of bacteria have been associated with inflammatory bowel disease, so irritable bowel disease, Crohn's, as well as autoimmune conditions. So this is something that we really want to boost up as well. Now, the only way to boost up fecal calibacterium prosnitsky is to first boost up the acromantia. So the acromantia is a good level to feed this guy so that it can produce the short chain fatty acids. So this is why it's really important to look at the gut microbiome and how we can optimize that because there's tons of studies out there that show changes to the gut microbiome in an unfavorable way, promote not only gut associated conditions, whether it's irritable bowel disease, Crohn's and colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, but also metabolic disorders such as obesity and diabetes. And a lot of individuals struggle for a very long time. They're exercising, they're eating less, they're following all the right things, they're sleeping, they're eating whole foods, but they can't seem to lose weight. And it all comes down to, we really have to optimize the gut. And there's some really cool rat studies where they're looking at the feces of an obese rat, transferring those feces into the lean rat. And regardless of the diet or exercise, it did not change for the lean mouse that lean mouse, again, became obese. And that's why they're studying the impact of the gut microbiome to try to find changes, metabolic changes that are happening in those who are a lean body composition versus an obese body composition. We do see that there's pretty dramatic changes. So the last one that I want to share with you is a research study specifically on ways to boost acromantia. And here, what it's showing is that you can supplement with bifidobacterium. So that's why we're very cautious about the type of probiotic that we're using in the metabolic reset. We want a probiotic that's going to support these types of bacteria. So again, you can absorb less calories from the foods you eat, less insulin resistance, less inflammation. That is really, really important. So you can get away with eating more. I'm always about minimal effort for maximal results. And that's why we're manipulating the gut microbiome to produce these dramatic weight loss changes. It's really nothing special in terms of the diet. And we actually completely eliminate exercise because over exercising raises cortisol, raises inflammation. It's going to be harder to have that optimal gut microbiome in that case. So we reduce exercise to zero, except for walking and yoga um, or light resistance training if you have to. Then we get your hormones and gut in check. Then we put the exercise back on if you like it. But again, supplementing with bifidobacterium has been shown to raise acromantia. In addition, things like metformin, a pharmaceutical drug, um, as well as antibiotics have actually been shown to manipulate the gut microbiome. And this is why metformin not only works at reducing blood sugar and elevated levels of insulin, but it may actually have a positive impact in terms of weight loss because of its effect on the gut microbiome, which is interesting. Rhubarb, as well as dietary polyphenols. So in the metabolic reset, I'm big on consuming mandatory vegetables as well as mandatory fruit at every single meal to have those polyphenols. Green tea is great. Um, this research review study here that showed that green tea and whole grape showed no effect, but I have seen other research articles that showed the benefit of green tea 10 cups a day it was a really high amount. So if you can't get that, you can consider supplementing curcumin, quercetin, resveratrol. Those have all shown positive benefits in other research studies, um, as well as, of course, quercetin and resveratrol have been shown to um, support a healthy immune response in terms of allergies and other immune responses in terms of illness, which is really great, as well as um, bifidobacterium, which we talked about. Again, here it's emphasizing how important diet is too. So avoid a high fat diet, high fat diet in combination with the FTO gene, especially a high fat diet rich in saturated fats and low in protein is going to promote 
promote obesity in those with the FTO gene and 42% of um, Caucasians have actually been shown to have that variant. So you want to watch with that. That could be why um, the coconut oil in terms of saturated fats got such the bad rap. It's not bad for everybody, but if you do have that genetic variant, it might not be the best for you. And then again, we want to watch with alcohol consumption. So that's the overview in terms of how gut health impacts weight. It comes down to acromantia, fecal bacterium prosnitsky. Um, there also is research, of course, on the FB ratio, which we can do another whole We'll talk on if your Firmicutes bacteroides ratio in your gut, which is just a category that all the bacteria fall into, if that is raised, increased caloric extraction from food, insulin resistance, prediabetes, all associated with that. And if you were to put on a probiotic that you might find at the, you know, the health food store that contains lactobacillus and bacillus base, those ones fall into the Firmicutes. So if you add on that probiotic and you already have a high FB ratio, you're just going to make it worse. Um, so you really want to be cautious about choosing the right probiotic that's meant for you to produce the results that you specifically want. So really, really important there. You can always run a GI map on yourself. I do it every single year. It's really easy. Just poop, grab a little bit of stool, put it in the container, ship it back. You have your results in five to seven days. Um, and it really gives us a really big insight in terms of your overall health to look at what your gut microbiome is like. Um, but again, if you can't do the testing, you can always work with a practitioner to figure out what's going to work right for you. And in terms of the metabolic reset, we optimize the gut, we optimize your hormones, we optimize your mindset. Of course, nutrition is a big part of it, but we are specifically choosing the nutrition to promote healthy gut microbiome because the foods you eat will feed those bacteria. So it's not just, you know, eat whatever you want. It's very specific. Um, and it's specific because we want you detoxifying. We want you eliminating estrogens. We want to promote a healthy gut microbiome. Um, so yes, it's regimented. It's like, here's the list of this that you eat at each meal. Um, but it's regimented for a very specific way to reset things so you can have that rapid weight loss and keep it off long, long term. So really, really important to know exactly what you're eating. Food is totally not only just fuel, but it really has profound effects on every single aspect of your health. So really important to prioritize whole foods, watch the high saturated fat, do some intermittent fasting, caloric restriction. That's been shown to boost acromancy again as well as lots of fruits and vegetables in your diet and specific fibers to raise specific things. So if you're interested in the GI MAP test, that's something that we do run at the Wild Psych Wellness. Um, we do lots of clinical consults on that. And of course we are running the metabolic reset program. If you are interested in optimizing your health, losing 20 to 40 pounds in just six weeks, feeling healthy, having the energy, sleeping better, having ideal optimized hormones. Um, it's really, really a great program. Um, incredibly proud of it, of course. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'm happy to chat with you and talk through them. Talk soon.